Atlanta Speaks. 11 Alive News at 11.30 starts now. Developing right now, Atlanta police have secured arrest warrants for the man accused of kidnapping and killing a woman. We have the latest details in this very disturbing case. And all new at this hour, a new poll shows the residents of Buckhead want a say in splitting from the city of Atlanta. What they say is the common factor in what happens next for the neighborhood. But first, right now at 1130, all eyes are on the tropics as Tropical Storm Fred eyes the Gulf Coast and 11 Alive Storm Trackers are on top of all the new developments and twists for you. Meteorologist Melissa Nord is here with us. Melissa, what can we expect from Fred here at home? Well, Aisha, I think we're going to see heavy rain as the biggest threat from Fred across North Georgia, but some of us could get some gusty winds. Those could be 30 miles an hour or higher, and we could also be looking at a lower chance of a brief spin up tornado. We get these that possibility with all landfalling tropical systems here. But here's Fred right now. Since this morning, Fred has gotten a little bit better organized and strengthened a little bit more. So the max winds are now up to 60 miles per hour, but those gusts are approaching hurricane force. You can see all the very heavy rain bands moving in towards Apalachicola, Panama City, uh, over towards Destin as well. And you'll notice how this storm is kind of lopsided. All the heavy rains on the eastern side of the storm, the western side over towards Pensacola, and Mobile, there's not much going on. It's breezy out there. They got some spotty showers, but the heavy rain is on the eastern side of the storm, and that brings me to our weather across North Georgia. We got some light showers right now in some of our southernmost counties, but what's going to happen is the center of Fred, the remnants of it, will be tracking actually through North Georgia. This puts us in that axis for heavy rainfall, some gusty winds for some of us with saturated ground and a lot of rain coming. It's not going to take much wind to cause a couple of trees to come down and then that isolated tornado chance as well. So the track of this tomorrow during the day is when the center of the remnants of Fred will be tracking right over North Georgia. So the bottom line, it's going to be making landfall this evening. Our impacts are primarily going to be tomorrow. In fact, I'm thinking between 7 tomorrow morning, 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. That's when the bulk of the rain comes and that's when the bulk of our other threats come. How much rain are we talking about? Two to five inches. There are going to be some locations in North Georgia that will get more than that. So think about roads when you get that much rain coming during one day time span. Roads tomorrow, they're going to be waterlogged. We're going to be talking about wet roads, big hydroplaning risk, and some roads could have standing water on them, so isolated flash flooding. And then that isolated chance of a brief spit up tornado also in the cards for tomorrow. Here's the flash flood watch now expanded to include all of North Georgia, two to five inch rainfall totals. Let me show you what one of our models is showing. All the rain coming in primarily right in the center of Fred where the Fred uh, center is. So we're looking at rainfall totals locally on our northwestern counties that could be even over five inches. So let's go through this hour by hour and talk about the timing of this. The rest of this afternoon, I'm expecting some of these kind of just tropical downpours to be moving in. But again, the main event moves in tomorrow morning. So through the evening commute, there will be some scattered downpours, a couple of embedded thunderstorms. We'll head to tomorrow morning. I want to show you this as the morning shows on tomorrow. Rain's going to start moving in, then it gets really intense as that morning commute is unfolding. Coming up, we'll take this forecast track out through your day tomorrow, and we'll look a little bit closer look at what to expect the rest of the week. Aisha. All right, Melissa, we'll see you soon. Thank you. All new at this hour, what's next for the Buckhead area? A new poll shows the majority of people who live there want the chance to vote on whether the area should split from Atlanta and create its own city. That's according to a group organizing the push for cityhood. Tracy A. McPeer joins us live to explain what all that looks like, Tracy. Well, the poll was conducted last month and was just released today. The biggest takeaways, 62% of the people surveyed want to take this to a vote. Now, the poll was commissioned by the Buckhead City Committee. It also shows that a huge number of voters feel like police are demoralized under current Atlanta leadership. And the number one issue residents are concerned about is crime. Bill White is leading the Buckhead cityhood efforts. He says if Buckhead were to become its own city, they would want to double the number of officers patrolling Buckhead streets. He says they are already recruiting police officers from across the U.S. We're going to allow our police to do their job. We're going to take the handcuffs off the wrong people. They're on the police right now. We're gonna, we're gonna put them on the criminals and we're gonna have local statutes, they're called local ordinances that 
we will be able to put folks in jail and not send them over to Fulton where they get a slap on the wrist and get out the next day. So criminals beware. Buckhead City is going to be a place where you do not want to come and do crime. The mayor and other Atlanta elected officials strongly oppose Buckhead splitting off. Now, in order for them to become their own city, the next step is an independent feasibility study that will be released on September 15th. Now, Bill White says this actually could be on the ballot by November of next year. All right, Tracy, that is definitely one we will keep a close eye on. Thank you. New developments today. Investigators have named a suspect in the kidnapping and killing of an Atlanta woman. Demarcus Brinkley faces a number of charges in connection with the death of Marion Abdurab. Police say she was kidnapped early Friday morning outside her home and her body was found hours later in the woods about two miles away. Joe Ripley has reactions and breaks down the charges. Reminders all over the city of a life lost supporters standing in solidarity all weekend long all over Atlanta for Mariam Abdul Rob seen here on surveillance around 440 Friday morning leaving Reverie where she worked as a bartender not long after police say the 27 year old was kidnapped from her home on Burroughs Street in southeast Atlanta her body was found hours later about two miles away off Lakewood Avenue and he is now in the ambulance. Atlanta police identified 27-year-old Demarcus Brinkley as a person of interest. Police detained him after a chase in Griffin ended in a crash that hospitalized Brinkley and another person. At last check, Brinkley was in stable condition at the hospital. Police were able to secure arrest warrants on Sunday. Once released from the hospital, Brinkley will face charges of murder, aggravated assault, kidnapping, false imprisonment, and felony weapons charges. Police would not say if Brinkley knew Abdul Rob. We got reaction from Atlanta City Councilwoman Carla Smith on the case. She said in a statement, quote, this is a heartbreaking time for our community and I send my deepest condolences to Miriam's family and friends. There was a deep sense of sadness in my heart and in the community since this terrible loss. In the wake of this tragedy, I'm grateful for the Atlanta Police Department's hard work and ability to identify and detain a suspect within hours. As the community grieves, my thoughts and prayers are with her loved ones after this painful loss. And for the very latest on this case, head to 11alive.com. We have more on the case and the suspect. Happening today, there is a proposal on the table to address new safety measures in Atlanta's parks. It directs the Atlanta Police Department to evaluate installing more security cameras in city parks and rec facilities. APD will have 60 days to get back to the city council with a cost estimate. Some in Atlanta have called for more cameras in city parks after the killing of Katie Jonas. She was found stabbed to death along with her dog in Piedmont Park. Those demanding answers say more cameras could mean safer parks and that meeting begins at 1 p.m. today. Firehouses across the states are mourning the loss of three firefighters from three different departments. One in Carroll County, Deputy Chief Tommy Hobson died after contracting COVID. He was with the Carroll County Fire Department since 1990 and was just promoted in November. Another in Barrow County, the first department tells us that Deputy Chief Tim Watson also died from COVID-19. He was with the department since 2015 and was a veteran of the U.S. Army and National Guard. In Hall County, fire apparatus operator Sean Stringer also died over the weekend. The cause of his death has not yet been made public. The department said that he's been there since 2007 after serving in the U.S. Marine Corps. Funeral arrangements are pending for these three men and will be announced when they are finalized and we'll bring them to you. And today, a last minute change of plans for some Clayton County families as another school switches to virtual learning over COVID-19 concerns. Students at Kendrick Middle School will learn online until at least the end of the month. This is just the latest change in what's already been a school year full of uncertainty. Since the first day of school, thousands of COVID-19 cases have been reported across Metro Atlanta school districts, and we focus on the top three. Gwinnett County, the state's largest school district, has more than 600 cases. As of Friday, there have been at least 539 confirmed and another 114 probable cases. This district took a staggered approach to starting back in half required mass. Cobb County, the second largest district, has the most cases. They report their numbers at the end of every week and reported 822 new cases on Friday. In this district, masks are optional. 
Masks are also optional in Cherokee County, where they are reporting 565 total active cases. That's a combination of 480 students and 85 staff. So most districts report these numbers either daily or weekly on their website. If you like to check the numbers in your child's district, it is readily available for you to check out publicly. And happening today, Governor Brian Kemp is going to outline some new steps to support our health care workers. The number of hospital patients in our state is steadily climbing with more than 4,000 COVID patients in need of care as of Friday. And right now, 16% of COVID-19 tests in the state are coming back positive. Health experts say they want that rate to be below 5%. We are a ways off from that. The governor is expected to speak at 4 p.m. We will stream that for you on 11alive.com and on our YouTube channel. For the very latest COVID data, head on over to our website right there to see where the cases are spiking in Georgia. Tensions rising as the Taliban takes over in Afghanistan. We have the latest on the chaotic efforts happening as thousands try to escape. What's next for U.S. soldiers and how President Biden is responding? job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always going to get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning This hour, U.S. military officials in Kabul, Afghanistan, said seven people were killed in the chaos at the airport this morning. This includes some who fell from a departing American military transport jet. This is video of what it looked like as people rushed toward the terminal at Kabul's airport after the Taliban took over yesterday. Thousands of U.S. troops are now in charge of securing the area around the airport. NBC's Richard Engel has the latest details on the situation in Afghanistan and what President Biden is doing to ensure the safety of U.S. soldiers. Afghans are thronging to Kabul's airport, desperate to get on planes and leave the country at any cost. They're scaling the airport's walls this morning, rushing in. There's no screening, no security checks, just force of numbers. It's all happening just a few hundred yards from the military side of Kabul airport, where the U.S. is staging an elaborate evacuation of American diplomats from the embassy. 
The militants took control of Kabul yesterday. Now, the Taliban are out in full force. They took over the presidential palace, occupied Kabul's version of the Oval Office. Afghanistan's president fled the country. The Taliban have set up checkpoints across the Afghan capital. The Taliban don't just control Kabul, but the whole country and all the weapons the U.S. bought for the Afghan army. The militants are much stronger now than 20 years ago when the U.S. drove them from power when they sheltered Osama bin Laden as he plotted 9-11. Now the Taliban are back as the U.S. leaves Afghanistan gripped by panic and run by extremists. The Taliban have been taking pot shots at the American planes as they leave and many are drawing comparisons to what's happening here today to the American withdrawal from Saigon. Richard Engel, NBC News, Kabul. Right now, search and rescue continues in Haiti after a 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit there over the weekend. The death toll has risen to nearly 1,300 people and still climbing. Here at Metro Atlanta, people with family and friends in Haiti are heartbroken. 11 Alive Chenu Her spoke with a man who's been in touch with loved ones. I have dear first cousins. Even though he's physically here in Metro Atlanta, Cyril Ketan's heart and soul is in Haiti. His thoughts are with those he loves, suffering from the devastating earthquake that has killed hundreds of people as of Sunday. We have a lot to grieve. Uh, I have people with family members who are still missing. He says there are people he knows who have lost everything they own, things they've worked their whole lives for, and now they're numb after yet another deadly earthquake hitting the country. Numb because that's a way to survive and, and get through it because it's back to back to back to back. In 2010, a deadly earthquake hit Haiti as well. In the country at that time was Emory University Gwazetta Business School professor Ken Keene. He was with the U.S. ambassador at the time. The shaking was so violent that we stumbled off the back porch of his residence and almost had to get down on our knees because the earth was uh, was uh, shaking so bad. Keene would shortly after that become the commander of a U.S. military joint task force to help Haiti. Our principal purpose was really logistical uh, support, opening the airfield in the immediate aftermath of the earthquake, which was critical. Keton says right now, grieve with us and yet stand with us. The Haitian community is coping, but trying to find immediate help. He believes it's also important to think about the future and giving to those who can help do that. When the emergency situation is over, no one's there to tend to the future. And those organizations that you give to are tending to the future. All right, and as we turn to the tropics, uh, Unfortunately, Haiti was just impacted by Fred and Grace. We've been watching the track of this other tropical system, which is now looking like it's sliding just south of um, the capital city there. But unfortunately, some rain moving to places that were just hit by that 7.2 magnitude earthquake over the weekend. We have Fred that we're focusing on. There's also newly formed Tropical Depression 8 not far from Bermuda. And on our website, 11alive.com, you can see all the latest on those other storms. Let me show you what I'm expecting for Tropical Storm Fred. This is gonna make landfall later today, very close to Panama City. But you notice as we were talking about earlier, all of the heavy rain where a lot of the thunderstorm activity is, it's on the eastern side of the storm. We call this the dirty side of the storm. So as we look at the track of Fred here over the next 48 hours, the center of this as it makes landfall is going to be cutting through southeastern Alabama and then into northwestern Georgia. So all that intense thunderstorm activity, the heavy rain, the stronger wind gusts, even though they are getting weaker as it moves further inland, we're going to be dealing with some of that across parts of north Georgia. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. Now, for the rest of this afternoon, if you're stepping outside right now, we're mainly dry. There's a bit more cloud cover around the rest of today than what we saw, say, uh, yesterday afternoon, especially Saturday. But once we get into the evening, we'll see some of those outermost little tropical downpours or rain bands that start to increase across Metro Atlanta. But our main impact time frame from Fred is going to be tomorrow during the day. So really seven in the morning to seven in the evening. I think that's when we get the bulk of the rain, the most intense downpours, that potential for gusty winds and a brief spin up tornado. That's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow mainly. All right, main threat is going to be heavy rain. I think tomorrow the roads mid morning through mid afternoon they're going to be a mess out there. If you have the option to stay home tomorrow and not have to be driving out on the roads, I would do so. 
Two to five inch rain totals through Wednesday. There's also that gusty wind potential. And I'll show you a few spots that could get wind gusts over 30 miles per hour and then a brief spin up tornado can't be ruled out as we track with all landfalling tropical systems heading up through North Georgia. Here's the forecast track this afternoon. I mentioned we'll see some increasing downpours, but it's not going to be a widespread rain all day the rest of today. So here are those increasing downpours. They're all be moving in from the southeast, kind of working their way through the metro around that evening commute. Then as we head later into the overnight, that's when you'll see increasing rain chances by first thing tomorrow morning across North Georgia. Those are as the center of Fred is tracking up through Alabama and then eventually into northwestern Georgia. So here we go. 8 o'clock in the morning, heavy rain really picking up. Lunchtime tomorrow, the center of the remnants are right over Carrollton. And as we head into the early evening hours, that center where the really heavy rain is, that's up in far north Georgia, but we're still dealing with this heavy rainfall threat in these rain bands and that potential for an isolated spin up moving through some of our easternmost counties. So tomorrow during the day, all day tomorrow, we're going to be tracking Fred, tracking right through north Georgia. So seven day outlook. Once we get past tomorrow, Tomorrow, rain chances will decrease. We're still pretty tropical, pretty warm outside by Aisha. At least our rain chances get a little lower as we head through the rest of the week. All right, looking forward to that, Melissa. Thank you. A bumpy start to the new school year for Clark Atlanta University and classes haven't even started yet. What students had to deal with while moving into the dorms over the weekend and how the university's president is trying to rectify the situation out there to make everybody laugh and feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Just Lee, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh and feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the, the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing 
Classes at Clark Atlanta University are expected to start Wednesday and the school year is already off to a bumpy start for some students. We heard from a few frustrated parents Friday who say the school didn't tell them before getting to campus that construction wasn't done yet at Heritage Commons. The university says 464 students had to be put up in temporary housing with no timeline on when the construction will be done. In a letter to students, University President Dr. George French Jr. apologized. The letter reads, my team recently failed to make the parent and student experience enjoyable. It is indefensible. As the buck stops with me, I prefer to acknowledge this and ask your forgiveness rather than making excuses. Here are some of the actions he says the university is taking for the affected students. A 50% refund of the current semester room fee. Construction crews are working around the clock, off-campus housing and hotel accommodations, with university staff on hand and the university is incurring costs for rooms, parking and shuttle service to transport those students between campus. You can find the full letter on 11alive.com. All new and next, the federal government is now investigating Tesla. Why they say the car company could be at fault for 11 car crashes and one death. As far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? The U.S. government is now investigating Tesla's autopilot driving system. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says it has identified 11 crashes involving Teslas in autopilot and emergency vehicles since 2018. There have been 17 injuries and one death in those crashes. The investigation will cover models Y, X, S, and three from 2014 through 2021. Right now, Audi is working on a concept for a new self-driving car that changes size to allow for more room to stretch 
when the driver wants to relax a little bit. The sports car is all electric and is called the Sky Sphere. When the car's computer takes over driving, the car expands in size to let the driver stretch out, even take a nap. Call that faith. And that process, the steering wheel, the brake and gas pedals all fold away. But it should be pointed out that the shape shifting car is just a concept and it can't actually drive itself yet. You're watching 11 Alive, where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. Developing right now, Atlanta police have secured arrest warrants for the man accused of kidnapping and killing a woman. We have the latest details in this disturbing case. And all new at this hour, a new poll shows the people of Buckhead want to say in splitting from Atlanta. What they say is the common factor in what happens next for the neighborhood. But first, all eyes are on the tropics as Tropical Storm Fred eyes the Gulf Coast and 11 Alive Storm Trackers are on top of all the new developments. Meteorologist Melissa Nord in with us now to tell us more about how this tropical storm could impact us this week, Melissa. Well, it definitely will impact us week. Aisha, tomorrow is going to be the main impact day from Fred. We're talking about a lot of heavy rainfall. Some of us will get some gusty winds depending on where you are across North Georgia. And we're also looking at that off chance with all land falling tropical systems of an isolated spin up. So we'll be watching those threats. But look at Fred, much different picture on radar than what we saw even last last night. So this storm has strengthened this morning. Max winds up to 60 miles per hour. So uh, it's still not hurricane force and we don't expect it to be at landfall. But look at these very heavy rain bands just on the north and eastern side of the storm. It's going to make landfall near Panama City as we had a little bit later into this evening. Right now this thing's about 300 miles away from us. But by tomorrow morning you wake up, rain is going to be much heavier outside and we'll be talking about a very, very soggy day tomorrow and a gusty day tomorrow. Tomorrow. Right now across North Georgia, if you're stepping out for your lunch hour, we got a couple of very spotty light showers that are starting to make their way in from the south and east. I expect the rain activity to really ramp up tonight. So for today, it's very scattered. We'll have some of these on and off tropical downpours and showers moving in. But when we see the rain chance getting likely, that's going to be starting tomorrow morning. And here's why the center of the storm no longer looking like it's going to track west of us. It looks like this tracks right over North Georgia, so that puts us in the zone for very heavy rainfall potential. Our rain totals will be two to five inches. Some could be higher than that, and we're also looking at some of our counties getting some gusts to 30 and an isolated spin up tornado can't be ruled out. You know, I think the bulk of the rain that we get in these severe weather threats are going to happen tomorrow between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. However, we're going to be monitoring the storm around the clock because those outer feeder bands even come in earlier than that tonight into early tomorrow morning. That could bring that potential for a little more intense weather as well. All right, here's the rainfall potential. Now, this is pretty much all coming in tomorrow during the day. So there could be some of us. You see these bright yellow colors. That's where the center of Fred tracks. That could be over five inches in some spots. But general, two to five inches is going to be possible. So roads tomorrow will likely be, they're not just going to be saturated, but the roads are going to have some ponding and standing water on them. Flash flood watch extended for the entire metro. Now let's get into the timing of this. For the rest of the afternoon, we're going to have some of these kind of little tropical downpours of rain bands starting to move in. Tracking from the southeast up towards kind of the north and west and west and northwest. We'll have to the overnight and those will increase in coverage, but it's not until about 4 a.m. tomorrow morning that we start to see the center of Fred moving into some of our southwestern counties. So here's tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. The morning commutes unfolding, the rain's getting more intense, and we'll watch those kind of rain bands to have a little bit of rotation in them as well. So very heavy rain starts during the morning commute tomorrow. It will not let up for some of us until the evening. We'll take you to this forecast track further into tomorrow afternoon coming up in just a bit. Aisha. All right, all new at this hour. What's next for the Buckhead area? A new poll shows the majority of people who live there, they want the chance to vote on whether the area should split from Atlanta and create its own city. That's according to a group organizing the push for cityhood. Tracy A. McPeer joins us live to explain how that all works. Well, the poll was conducted last month and was just released today. The biggest takeaways, 62% of the people who were surveyed say they want to put this to a vote. Now, the poll was commissioned by the Buckhead City Committee, and it also shows that a huge number of voters feel like police are demoralized under current Atlanta leadership. And the number one issue residents are concerned about is crime. 
Bill White is leading the Buckhead cityhood efforts. He says if Buckhead were to become its own city, they would want to double the number of officers patrolling Buckhead streets. He says they are already recruiting police officers from across the U.S. We're going to allow our police to do their job. We're going to take the handcuffs off the wrong people. They're on the police right now. We're going to we're going to put them on the criminals and we're going to have local statutes. They're called local ordinances that we will be able to put folks in jail and not send them over to Fulton where they get a slap on the wrist and get out the next day. So criminals beware. Buckhead City is going to be a place where you do not want to come and do crime. Now, the mayor and other Atlanta elected officials have said that they strongly oppose Buckhead from splitting off. Now, the next step, if Buckhead were to become its own city, would be an independent feasibility study. That is actually supposed to be released on September the 15th. Now, Bill White says that this whole referendum could be on the ballot in November of next year. All right, Tracy, this one is the big talker around the city. And in Buckhead, we will definitely stay on top of this one. Thank you. New developments today. Investigators have named a suspect in the kidnapping and killing of an Atlanta woman. Demarcus Brinkley faces a number of charges in connection with the death of Miriam Abdurab. Police say she was kidnapped early Friday morning outside her home and her body found hours later in the woods about two miles away. Joe Ripley has reactions and breakdowns on those charges. Reminders all over the city of a life lost. Supporters standing in solidarity all weekend long all over Atlanta for Miriam Abdulrab, seen here on surveillance around 440 Friday morning, leaving Reverie where she worked as a bartender. Not long after, police say the 27 year old was kidnapped from her home on Burroughs Street in southeast Atlanta. Her body was found hours later, about two miles away off Lakewood Avenue. And he is now in the ambulance. Atlanta police identified 27-year-old Demarcus Brinkley as a person of interest. Police detained him after a chase in Griffin ended in a crash that hospitalized Brinkley and another person. At last check, Brinkley was in stable condition at the hospital. Police were able to secure arrest warrants on Sunday. Once released from the hospital, Brinkley will face charges of murder, aggravated assault, kidnapping, false imprisonment, and felony weapons charges. Police would not say if Brinkley knew Abdul Rob. We got reaction from Atlanta City Councilwoman Carla Smith on the case. She said in a statement, quote, this is a heartbreaking time for our community and I send my deepest condolences to Miriam's family and friends. There is a deep sense of sadness in my heart and in the community since this terrible loss. In the wake of this tragedy, I'm grateful for the Atlanta Police Department's hard work and ability to identify and detain a suspect within hours. As the community grieves, my thoughts and prayers are with her loved ones after this painful loss. For the very latest on this case, go to 11alive.com. We have more on the case and the suspect. Happening today, there is a proposal on the table to address new safety measures in Atlanta's parks. It directs the Atlanta Police Department to evaluate installing more security cameras in the city, in the city parks and rec facilities. APD will have 60 days to get back to city council with a cost estimate. Some in Atlanta have called for more cameras in city parks after the killing of Katie Jonas. She was found stabbed to death along with her dog in Piedmont Park. Those demanding answers say more cameras could mean safer parks. That meeting begins at 1 p.m. Firehouses across the state mourning the loss of three firefighters from three different departments. One in Carroll County, Deputy Chief Tommy Hobson died after contracting COVID. He was with the Carroll County Fire Department since 1990 and was just promoted in November. Another in Barrow County, the first department tells us that Deputy Chief Tim Watson also died from COVID-19. He was with the department since 2015 and was a veteran of the U.S. Army and National Guard. In Hall County, fire apparatus operator Sean Stringer also died over the weekend. The cause of his death has not been made public yet. The department said he had been there since 2007 after serving in the U.S. Marine Corps. Funeral arrangements are pending for these three men and will be announced when they are finalized. And today, a last minute change of plans for some Clayton County families as another school switches to virtual learning over COVID-19 concerns. Students at Kendrick Middle School will learn online until at least the end of the month. This is just the latest change in what's already been in a school year full of uncertainty. Since the first day of school, thousands of COVID-19 cases have been reported across Metro Atlanta school districts. We focused on the top three. 
Gwinnett County, the state's largest school district, has over 600 cases as of Friday. There have been at least 539 confirmed and another 114 probable causes. This district took a staggered approach to starting back and have required mass. Cobb County, the second largest district, has the most cases. They report their numbers at the end of every week and reported 822 new cases on Friday. In this district, masks are optional. Masks are also optional in Cherokee County, where they are reporting 565 total active cases. That is a combination of 480 students and 85 staff. Most districts report these numbers either daily or weekly on their website. So if you'd like to check the numbers out in your child's school district, they are public information. And happening today, Governor Brian Kemp is going to outline some new steps to support our health care workers. They are stretched thin again. The number of hospital patients in our state is steadily climbing with more than 4,000 COVID patients in need of care as of Friday. And right now, 16% of COVID-19 tests in the state are coming back positive. Health experts say they want the rate to be below 5%. The governor is expected to speak at 4 p.m. We'll stream it on 11alive.com and on our YouTube channel. For the very latest on COVID data, head on over to our website to see where the COVID-19 cases are spiking right now in Georgia. Tensions rising as the Taliban takes over Afghanistan. We have the latest on the chaotic efforts happening as thousands try to escape. What's next for U.S. soldiers and how President Biden is responding? The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the, the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is... New this hour, U.S. military officials in Kabul, Afghanistan, said seven people were killed in the chaos at the airport this morning. This includes some who fell from a departing American military transport jet. NBC's Richard Engel has the latest details on the situation in Afghanistan and what President Biden is doing to ensure the safety of U.S. soldiers. Afghans are thronging to Kabul's airport, desperate to get on planes and leave the country at any cost. They're scaling the airport's walls this morning, rushing in. There's no screening, no security checks, just force of numbers. 
It's all happening just a few hundred yards from the military side of Kabul airport, where the U.S. is staging an elaborate evacuation of American diplomats from the embassy. The militants took control of Kabul yesterday. Now, the Taliban are out in full force. They took over the presidential palace, occupied Kabul's version of the Oval Office. Afghanistan's president fled the country. The Taliban have set up checkpoints across the Afghan capital. The Taliban don't just control Kabul, but the whole country and all the weapons the U.S. bought for the Afghan army. The militants are much stronger now than 20 years ago when the U.S. drove them from power when they sheltered Osama bin Laden as he plotted 9-11. Now the Taliban are back as the U.S. leaves Afghanistan gripped by panic and run by extremists. The Taliban have been taking pot shots at the American planes as they leave and many are drawing comparisons to what's happening here today to the American withdrawal from Saigon. Richard Engel, NBC News, Kabul. Right now, search and rescue efforts continue in Haiti after a 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit over the weekend. The death toll has risen to nearly 1,300 people and is still climbing. Here in Metro Atlanta, people with family and friends in Haiti are heartbroken. 11 Alive Chinu Har spoke with a man who's been in touch with loved ones. I have dear first cousins. Even though he's physically here in Metro Atlanta, Sorel Ketan's heart and soul is in Haiti. His thoughts are with those he loves, suffering from the devastating earthquake that has killed hundreds of people as of Sunday. We have a lot to grieve. Uh, I have people with family members who are still missing. He says there are people he knows who have lost everything they own, things they've worked their whole lives for, and now they're numb after yet another deadly earthquake hitting the country. Numb because that's a way to survive. And, and get through it, because it's back to back to back to back. In 2010, a deadly earthquake hit Haiti as well. In the country at that time was Emory University Guzetta Business School professor Ken Keene. He was with the U.S. ambassador at the time. The shaking was so violent that we stumbled off the back porch of his residence and almost had to get down on our knees because the earth was uh, was uh, shaking so bad. Keene would shortly after that become the commander of a U.S. military joint task force to help Haiti. Our principal purpose was really logistical uh, support, opening the airfield in the immediate aftermath of the earthquake, which was critical. Keton says right now, grieve with us and yet stand with us. The Haitian community is coping, but trying to find immediate help. He believes it's also important to think about the future and giving to those who can help do that. When the emergency situation is over, no one's there to tend to the future. And those organizations that you give to are tending to the future. And, you know, you're watching over the weekend after this earthquake happened for the path of then tropical storm Grace. And the center of this storm is tracking just south of Haiti and Hispaniola, but they are getting some rain from that today. Also in the tropics, we have Tropical Depression 8 and, of course, Fred. And Fred is the focus of our forecast. Going to be closing in on landfill here, landfall early this evening. It's got max winds to 60 miles per hour with gusts to 70. And you'll see that all the thunderstorm activity, the really heavy rain, it's all in mainly one side of the storm. It's right near the center of it and all on the right side. So it's lopsided and with the path of this storm heading right up into North Georgia, we're going to be on what's called the dirty side of it, where all of the heavy rainfall moves through North Georgia. So here's the big picture. It makes its landfall early this evening. First thing tomorrow morning, it's starting to track up towards LaGrange, then all through the mid morning to early afternoon. Atlanta is getting very heavy rain. Then by tomorrow evening, it's starting to pull out of our area. So the bottom line, we're going to have impacts all day tomorrow, especially I think 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. is when we'll see the greatest impacts for us. Heavy rain, everybody's going to get some heavy rain. Now some of the totals in parts of North Georgia could be two to five inches, but locally could even be higher than that. So I am concerned tomorrow about um, having some ponding standing water on the roads. Creeks and streams are going to be very running, very much running high, and there could also be thanks to some gusty winds and saturated grounds. We could see some isolated trees coming down just because of how wet and uh, breezy it will be outside tomorrow. We won't necessarily get the tropical storm force winds. It will be much weaker by the time it reaches us, but it doesn't take much with ground this saturated to call, cause a couple of trees to come down. So let's go through the hour by hour forecast. This afternoon, we're going to have some of those 
outermost little tropical downpours or rain bands moving in and this will not be widespread rain, but you'll notice as we go further into the day in the overnight, the rain starts to pick up. Let's push it out to tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. The center of Fred is still down in southeastern Alabama, closer to Dothan, but the rain is beginning to pick up during the morning commute tomorrow. By 8 a.m., the center of the storm near Columbus, so very heavy rain down I-85 and I-75 south of Atlanta during that first part of the morning commute, and it gets heavier as the morning unfolds across all of North Georgia. So lunchtime tomorrow, the center of the storm tracking right over the Atlanta metro, very heavy rain. That potential for gusty winds with some of these rain bands and also we could see an isolated spin up tornado. Five o'clock the center's tracking over Lake Lanier. So once we go further into the evening tomorrow, we will see that gradually will begin to dry things out from southwest to northeast. Rainfall totals two to five inches could locally be higher than that. So tomorrow's going to be one of those days where if you have the option of telecommuting, working from home, I would do that to stay off the roads. 90% chance of rain tomorrow. Might as well bump that up to 100. And and then into the end of the week, just scattered showers and thunderstorms. Aisha. All right, as we continue to track the number of coronavirus cases, our Verify team is answering your questions about long-term complications. There's no denying hair loss. It can be upsetting, but is it linked to COVID-19? One viewer asks and Liza Lucas verifies. Sherry has a question. Is it true that your hair can fall out after you recover from COVID-19? Is that one of the side effects? Let's verify. Our sources, the American Academy of Dermatology and Dr. Jamie McElfresh, an associate professor of dermatology at Emory University. Let's start by saying Sherry isn't alone wondering about this one. Dr. McElfresh says it's one of the most common questions she's hearing from patients. It is actually true that some people can experience hair loss after recovering from COVID-19 or in some cases, even from just the stress of this pandemic overall. The American Academy of Dermatology says if your hair is falling out in clumps after getting coronavirus, it could be a side effect. Experts say it typically happens two to three months following infection as part of the body's response to stress, whether it's physical stress like fever and the illness or emotional. If the body experiences stress, it wants to conserve energy for important things like keeping you healthy and fighting infection. Hair growth isn't necessarily as important so temporarily it may rest the hair and which later on people will experience some shedding. Dr. McElfresh says this is also not technically hair loss we're talking about, but rather a temporary increase in hair shedding. It's also not unique to COVID-19 and the condition should improve with time. It may seem like it takes forever, but usually six to 12 months later, it does get better. So Sherry, yes, we can verify it's true. Some people may notice their hair fall out after COVID-19, but experts say it's temporary and not to panic. Of course, if you notice it's not getting better, chat with your dermatologist to get checked out. A bumpy start to the new school year for Clark Atlanta University and classes haven't even started yet. What students had to deal with while moving into the dorms this weekend and how the university's president is trying to make it right. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast and watch on demand. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as the, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she 
Classes at Clark Atlanta University are expected to start Wednesday and the school year is already off to a bumpy start for some students. We heard from frustrated parents Friday who say the school failed to tell them before arriving on campus, construction was not done at Heritage Commons. The university says 464 students had to be put up in temporary housing with no timeline on when construction will be done. In a letter to students, University President Dr. George French Jr. apologized. The letter reads, my team recently failed to make the parent and student experience enjoyable. It is indefensible. As the buck stops with me, I prefer to acknowledge this and ask your forgiveness rather than making excuses. So here are some of the actions he says the university will take for those students who are impacted. A 50% refund for the current semester room fee. Construction crews are working around the clock. Off campus housing and hotel accommodations with university staff on hand and the university is incurring costs for rooms, parking and shuttle service to transport students between campus. You can find the full letter on 11alive.com. Up next, we'll take one last look at Fred and how the tropical storm will impact your work week and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the, the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion. They well, Lisa has one last check of our forecast. And just to kind of recap, for today, we just have some increasing showers and tropical downpours, but you'll have plenty of dry hours in there as well. But tomorrow morning, by the time you wake up and you're heading to work, it is raining very heavy. This is because Fred's going to be tracking right over North Georgia. So very heavy rain, especially from about 7 tomorrow morning to 7 tomorrow evening. We're also talking about some gusty winds. There could be some gusts over 30 miles an hour. And in some of those outermost, those little rain bands, we'll be watching for a little spin up as well that's possible. So a lot to be tracking, Aisha, between now and then. All right, Melissa, thank you. Be sure to tune in to 11 Alive Morning News as we track that for you from 5 to 7 a.m. with Chesley McNeil. Actually, if you're a super early riser, you can watch Wake Up with Chesley. That is coming up at 4.30 a.m. Just in case you know you want to get your day started knowing what's going on with the forecast. Always, we'll keep you covered on 11alive.com. Make it a great Monday, everybody.
expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as the, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel kind of